Hello and welcome to Simpson Strong Ties training video. This video is about bolt form steel connector installations. After watching this video, you will be familiar with the basic terms associated with cold form steel connectors and their common fastener types. You'll also learn how to install cold form steel connectors correctly and use them to form a continuous load path. A continuous load path can effectively resist wind and seismic forces by reinforcing the structure from the roof to the foundation. Cold form steel framing members, sometimes called light gauge steel, are most commonly made by roll forming the steel through a series of dies. Unlike for hot form structural I-beams, this process does not require heat to form the shape. Because of its thickness, cold form steel or CFS requires no heat and can be produced faster at a more economical rate. The CFS wall studs at each end of a shear wall, sometimes called boundary members or compression studs, are usually made from two studs positioned back to back. This is where you usually find a hold down. The stud sizes are specified by the designer. Construction that is not 100% steel and incorporates a mixture of wood or masonry is called hybrid framing. Examples are wood trusses on steel walls, steel trusses or masonry walls, etc. We will talk more about this later. Let's talk about the fastening systems used to make connections between CFS connectors and the steel framing. For steel to steel connections, screws are the most common fasteners. Screws made for CFS have better shear values than nails. It is the designer's responsibility to specify the type and number of fasteners to use on a particular connector. Depending on the connector selected, designer may specify fewer screws than the holes we provide. It is important to install the fasteners in the holes that are provided. All screws should penetrate and protrude through the attached materials a minimum of three full exposed threads. Always consult with your specifier if welding is acceptable with the connection specified. Some steels have poor weldability and have a tendency to crack when welded. Welded connections need to be performed by certified welders. The galvanized coating on the steel is burned off during the welding process, so it should be treated with cold galvanizing or other similar material to retain the corrosion resistance of the welded area. Acrylic and epoxy-based adhesives such as acrylic tie, epoxy tie, set XP, set, and ET epoxy tie adhesives may be used as a high-strength anchor solution in CFS structures. The Titan HD is a high-strength threaded anchor for use in concrete and masonry, securing CFS construction to the foundation. The Titan HD is recommended for permanent dry, non-corrosive applications or temporary outdoor applications. It may be used with hold downs or the built-in washer head conveniently secures the bottom track to the foundation. Power actuated fasteners provide a quick and economical method for fastening cold form steel to concrete or steel base materials. Titan screws are 3 16 and 1 quarter inch diameter masonry screws for attaching all types of components to concrete and masonry. Industry studies show that hardened fasteners can experience performance problems in corrosive environments. Accordingly, use this product in dry and non corrosive environments only. All specified fasteners must be installed according to the instructions. Incorrect fastener quantity, size, type, material, or finish may cause the connection to fail. Install all specified fasteners before loading the connection. Some fasteners may have premature failure if exposed to moisture. Make sure the correct fastener coating is used together with the correct connector and installation environment. It is the designer's responsibility to select a connector using the current code to provide a continuous load path to resist wind, seismic, and other forces imposed on the structure. In order for the connectors to properly resist these forces, they must be installed correctly. The SSTB is designed for maximum performance as an anchor bolt for hold downs. This bolt holds the hold downs and prevents them from sliding or overturning, 
helping them resist seismic or wind forces. The anchor mate is designed to hold the anchor bolt in place before the concrete pour. The anchor mate holders are reusable for the next job. Install the anchor mate to the form board using a 2x4 or 2x6 guide. The threaded grippers hold the bolt in the exact same location and height without using a nut. Match the alignment arrows with the SSTB bolt head arrow. Identification arrows on the bolt head show which way to install the anchor bolt. Install the SSTB before the concrete port using anchor mates. Install the SSTB using one, number four rebar, three to five inch from the top of the foundation. Use foundation rebar and not post-tension cable. The SSTB does not need to be tied to the rebar. The MAS is designed for concrete foundations, such as slabs or concrete stem walls. It's usually installed at the edge of the slab or stem wall and lets the finisher trowel right up to the edge without having to steer around anchor bolts. You can install the MAS either before or right after you pour the concrete. In either case, when you install the MAS correctly, the embedded portion is fully submerged in the concrete and the straps are outside the concrete. To install the MAS before the concrete is poured, set the straps on top of the form, direct it away from inside of the foundation. Set the embedded portion in the area where you'll pour the concrete. Drive a duplex nail through each strap into the form. You can also install the MAS after the concrete is poured, but while it's still wet. To do this, hold one strap while you submerge the hook in the wet concrete up to the embedment line. Wiggle the anchor from side to side to draw it tightly to the inside of the form and to ensure concrete consolidation. Make sure that the straps are flush with the top of the form. Then let the concrete cure. Watch the anchor doesn't sink or move during curing process. After the concrete is cured, remove the duplex nails and the form board. After the wall is in position, a 12 inch minimum length section of stud must be installed inside the track. Then, bend the MAS straps over the stud in the track. Install two number 10 screws on the side and four number 10 screws on the top. If a wall stud is located at any of the MAS strap locations, you may screw the straps to the wall stud. It is recommended that you use low profile head screws when sheathing is installed over the MAS. The STHD is an economical embedded strap tie hold down with high load capacity. The STHD, the S slash PAHD, and the S slash HPHD are hold downs that have one end embedded into the concrete and the other strap end above grade that is screwed into the wall studs. The STHD has a slot below the embedment line which allows for increased front to back concrete bond and reduced spalling. The following shows how the STHD is installed. The STHD is installed on the form board before the concrete is poured. The built-in tab holds the STHD away from the form board and keeps the embedment portion at the correct angle. The best way to secure it to the form is to use a strap mate holder and nails. Line up the strap mate locator line on the STHD with the top of the strap mate. One number four rebar must be installed in the triangular area or shear cone formed by the embedded portion of the strap tie in the concrete. During the concrete pour, the strap may be wiggled and adjusted while the concrete is vibrated to prevent honeycombing behind the embedded portion of the strap. Just make sure that the locator line is in the correct position before concrete cures. After the concrete cures, the SM1 may be removed and reused. It may be bent down to allow installation of the wall before attaching to the wall studs. Only one full bend cycle is allowed. Additional bending will weaken the strap. Screw the strap to the cold form steel studs from the bottom up to prevent bulging. This is what a correct installation looks like. Bending the strap 90 degrees to aid in wall placement may cause spalling behind the strap. Consult the latest Simpson catalog to see if the load reductions may apply. Any portion of the strap left exposed should be protected 
against corrosion. Straps should not be more than five degrees out of plumb, left or right, otherwise load reductions may apply. The S-HDU, the S-HDS, and the S-HTT series hold downs install using self-drilling screws in the studs. Back-to-back -back studs or other compression members are usually required with the hold downs. The designer should specify the correct anchorage when selecting the hold down. Place the S-HDU over the SSTB anchor bolt and install it with a standard hex nut. Drive number 14 or 1 quarter inch self-drilling screws through the provided holes in the hold down into the compression stud members. Hold downs may also be installed using RFB bolts with epoxy adhesives. Where lighter loads are desired, a Titan HD may be used. The S-Slash HDB series is ideal for bolt-on applications where the cold form stud manufacturer can pre-punch the bolt holes. Place the hole down over the anchor bolt and fix it with the standard hex nut. A washer is not required for the anchor bolt. Use A307 bolts as the stud bolts for the S-Slash HDB hole downs. Standard washers are required on stud bolt nuts for model S-Slash HDB has two triangular holes that require number 14 screws when slotted studs are used as the compression studs. A thin wall socket is required for the S-HD15B to tighten the nut on the one inch anchor bolt. This is how an S-HDB bolted connection looks when it is installed correctly. S-HDS and S-HDB hold downs may also be welded per the designer's recommendation and specification. The steel strong wall shear wall for CFS is a prefabricated metal shear panel designed to resist lateral forces induced by wind or earthquakes. The steel strong wall provides high capacity narrow wall solutions for cold form steel framing. The wall installs easily in cold form steel framing and eliminates the need for X bracing. Pre-installed steel stud boundary elements make it easier to attach siding and drywall. Steel strong walls may be custom ordered to the desired plate height. The S-slash SSW connects to the foundation using steel strong wall anchor bolts SSWAB. The SSWABs come in 3 quarter and 1 inch diameter, have heavy hex nuts fixed in place. The purpose of the SSWAB anchor bolts is to transfer lateral forces from the shear wall to the foundation. This keeps it from sliding and overturning off the foundation. Steel strong wall concrete templates are reusable templates that attach to the form boards. The purpose of the concrete templates is to properly space, hold, and elevate the required anchor bolts. There are five different template sizes and three basic ways to use them based on the different form types. SSWT, standard reversible template used for both interior and exterior applications. SSWTPF, used for panel form applications. SSW TBL used for brick ledge applications. Decide which method you will use before installing the anchor bolts. Start the installation by securing the anchor bolts to the template with the compression nuts and the installation nut. The next step is to place the whole assembly on the wood form. Be sure to check that it is in the right location. Pour the concrete to the top of the compression nut. After the concrete is cured, remove the nails, the top installation nut, and the reusable template. Now that we've learned how easy it is to install the SSWAB anchor bolts using the three different templates, let's move on to installing a steel strong wall. To install the steel strong wall, the first step is to place the wall over the anchor bolts. Next, install the heavy hex nuts that are provided for you. Please note that a snug, tight fit is required. Use a hand wrench or socket. Do not use an impact wrench. For top of the wall attachment, use number 14 self-drilling screws extended through the connection a minimum of three exposed threads. Make sure to fill all screw holes. This is how a steel strong wall looks in a steel framed wall when installed. There are a variety of joist hangers to choose from for the cold form steel. There are the traditional top flange hangers, 
face mount hangers and the innovative S slash JCT hanger made especially for steel framing. The traditional top flange S slash LBV, S slash BA, or S slash B hangers may be ordered in several different widths and heights to match your steel frame joist sizes. Top flanges hold the hanger in place during installation, which makes installation faster and easier. Before you begin installing any hanger, verify that you have correctly identified the joist size, the hanger size, the hanger type, and the hanger location. The type and number of fasteners will be determined by the specified hanger. The first step is to the joist layout so that you know where to install the hanger. Place a hanger so that the top flanges rest on top of the steel header. Install number 10 screws through the top flanges and into the top of the steel header. All screw holes in the top flange must be filled along with all holes on the website of the joist. Place the joist in the hanger. There should be an eighth of an inch between the end of the joist and the face of the steel header to prevent floor squeaks. Install number 10 screws through the hanger side flanges and into the joist. This is what a correct installation looks like. S slash LBV, S slash BA, and S slash B hangers may also be installed by welding the top flanges a minimum of 1 8 by 2 fillet weld on each top flange as required. Distribute the weld equally on both top flanges. Consult the designer and the code for special considerations when welding galvanized steel. This versatile hanger allows steel joists to be attached from either side or doubled up. This hanger can also be used with either steel or wood headers. The S slash JCT joist may be attached from the left or right sides. One size fits joist 8 inch through 14 inch deep. The S slash HJCT provides all the same features and has a higher capacity hanger. Install a top flange of the hanger or the header using number 10 screws. For the minimum load capacity, fill all the round holes. To achieve the maximum load capacity, fill both round and triangular holes. Note that the S slash HJCT hanger uses number 14 screws for a higher allowable load. Place the joist on the hanger. Two hooks at the top of the hanger allow the joist to be positioned temporarily with the flange to the left or the right until the joist can be secured. The S slash JCT is field skewable up to 45 degrees left or right. This installation may also be used for weld on applications. The minimum required weld on the top flange is 1 8 by 2 and a half inch fillet weld on each side of the top flange. Consult your designer and the appropriate building codes for special considerations when welding galvanized steel. Sometimes concealed flange face mount hangers such as the HU series are the hangers of choice. They may be screwed or welded to the supporting steel members. The first step is to measure and mark the intended location of the joist on the header so that you know where to install the hanger. For screwed applications, fill all round hole with number 10 screws. For welded applications, use one inch weld segments, equally spaced top to bottom, with half the segments on each side of the hanger. Based on the desired load, you will need four or six one inch weld segments. Welds may either lap joint on the outside edge of the flanges or flare bevel groove on the flange bend line. TB and LTB tension bridging are a cost-effective way to provide bracing between floor joists when compared with field fabricated blocking and clip angles with multiple fasteners. The LTB bridging features a staggered fastener pattern that accommodates 6 to 12 inch web heights on floor joists. Either the TB or LTB will fit joist flange widths from 1 and 5 eighths to 3 inches. Install TB or LTB bridging on the top flange of the first joist. Drive two number 10 screws in any of the seven screw holes provided. Bend the bridging so that the other side of the strap meets the bottom flange of the second joist. Drive two more number 10 screws in any of the seven holes provided on this end. Leaving a minimum of a quarter inch gap between the first bridging, install the next bridging diagonally in the opposite direction in the same manner. The quarter inch gap will help prevent floor squeaks. This is what a correct installation looks like.
Truss slip clips, the STC, DTC, or the STCT supports the top of a non-load bearing wall while allowing vertical movement of the truss cord. The one and a half inch slot permits vertical truss cord movement when loads are imposed on the structure. To install the STCT, first place it on the top plate. Position it next to the truss. Then install two number eight screws into the top track. Install slot screws in the middle of the slot. Screws installed into the truss or rafter should not be driven too tight to allow vertical truss movement. This is what the STCT looks like when it's installed correctly. The truss spacer bracer captures the on-center spacing of trusses and laterally braces the truss members. Its tube shape provides strength in both compression and tension. You can use the TSB2-24 as lateral bracing for top cords, bottom cords, and web members. Start the installation by placing the brace on top of the top cord or bottom cord. Next, secure the bracing by driving two number 10 screws through the two holes at each end of the brace. If web members require permanent lateral bracing, the truss design drawings will indicate which webs to brace. You can install the TSB on either side of the web members. Here is what the TSB2-24 looks like when it's correctly installed. You don't need to remove the TSB2-24 before you install the permanent sheathing diaphragm. Its profile is low enough that you can sheath over it. Hurricane ties are designed to resist imposed seismic and wind loads, connecting the truss or joist to the wall framing. This versatile line may be used for many applications where one member crosses another, strong back attachments, and various general purposes. The S-H3 is a versatile uplift connector. This series of truss connectors attaches to one side of the truss and the other to the track below it. The S-H3 comes in lefts and rights to aid in the installation. To install, align the S-H3 with the top of the top plate. Secure the S-H3 by driving two screws into the top plate and two screws into the truss. The S-H1 is ideal connector when installing the ties before the trusses are put into position. The S-H1 can be pre-installed on layout. When stacking trusses, simply slide them into position. Place the hanger such that it aligns flush on the top track of the wall. Drive three number 10 screws into all holes in the top track and wall stud. The S-H1 can be installed with flanges facing outwards when installed inside a wall for truss applications. Hurricane ties do not replace solid blocking. S-slash PSPN protecting shield plate can also be used as a track splice strap. These plates are required to meet the plumbing and electrical codes. Note that there are more holes in this part than the required number of screws. Consult with the designer to determine how many screws to use. Place the S-slash PSPN between the studs where the track flange has been compromised and install a required number of number 10 screws. We realize that not all construction is 100% cold form steel. Some construction uses hybrid framing and therefore connector installation may be different. The S-slash JCT may be used with a wood header. Full length 10D nails are used in the top flange and face of the hanger. Consult the catalog or designer to determine how many nails should be used. For the S-slash HJCT hanger, SDS screws may be required through the face into the header to achieve the desired loads. Place the joist on the hanger. A hook at the top of the hanger will allow the joist to be positioned temporarily. Install number 10 screws through the side of the hanger into the steel joist. Many times wood trusses or rafters are used over CFS framing. In this situation, regular wood hurricane ties can be used. Consult the hybrid framing section of the catalog or the designer to determine how many nail or screws should be installed. Use 80 nails into the wood and number 10 screws to secure to the CFS. 
Do not install screws into the wood or nails into the steel framing. In the case of a wood truss which needs to attach to a steel header, you would use a U, LU, or HU hanger, whichever meets the required design loads. Use the required number and type nail for the truss and use the required number and type of screw for the steel header. When wood framing members are used in conjunction with steel framing, standard Simpson connectors should be used except for double sheared hangers like the LUS, the MUS, and the HUS. The slant nailing in such hangers will deflect off the CFS on the wall. Incorrect fastener quantity, size, type, material, or finish may cause a connection to fail. Welded connections should be done by certified welders only. It is important to install the fasteners in the holes that are provided. Do not install screws into the wood or nails into the steel framing. Double shear hangers cannot be used in steel construction. The cold form steel products cannot be bent on the field unless specified by the designer. We covered a lot in this short video about cold form steel connectors. Now you are familiar with basic terms associated with cold form steel connector installation and you can use the different fastening systems. You also know how to install cold form steel connectors correctly while avoiding some common mistakes. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for your attention. Goodbye.